Hi friends, this is Mark Fox of Forever Free Ministries bringing you another edition of Breaking Prophetic News. There are some disturbing polls that I want to share with you here at the beginning of this short video. According to recent polls, 70% of Americans feel that their nation is on the wrong track, heading in the wrong direction. That's according to January 11, 2016 Rasmussen Reports National Telephone Survey. In addition, a majority of Americans feel we are losing the war against ISIS, according to NBC News poll, November 2015. Furthermore, most Americans have very little or no trust in the presidency, Supreme Court, and especially the Congress. Many believe that corruption in government is rampant. Sadly, America is divided and the chasm is widening. The inflammatory rhetoric in the mainstream and social media is a daily expression of that. Current surveys show that the majority of Americans believe the United States of America has taken a downturn and is no longer the great country that it once was, according to a Bloomberg politics poll, September 2015. Meanwhile, presidential candidate Donald Trump has chosen a fitting slogan for his campaign, making America great again. Now he is not alone in making such huge promises. Every presidential candidate, a matter of fact, makes all sorts of promises of a better future for America if they are chosen, voted for, uh, to fill the Oval Office. And although Trump's slogan and speeches seem to resonate with a large number of potential voters, many realize that our grave problems in America are primarily moral and that ultimately politics cannot provide a lasting solution. Coming up with a more perfect political solution to immigration, jobs, terrorism, the economy, and more is not enough to truly make America great again. It will require a return to God, and that cannot be enforced by the government. The fact is that democracy can only work in a nation that is moral. Our founding fathers understood that perfectly. For example, John Adams warned, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. And Benjamin Franklin stated, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become corrupt and vicious, they have more need of masters. Now, many are asking, what is the future of the United States of America? Is America the sole remaining superpower mentioned in the Bible? Well, if you go to any Christian bookstore and take a look at the books on end time prophecy and the movies like the best-selling Left Behind novel series, you would think that it is not in the Bible. Tim LaHaye, author of the Left Behind series, says, quote, one of the hardest things for American prophecy students to accept is that the United States is not clearly mentioned in Bible prophecy, yet our nation is the only superpower in the world today, according to the late great United States by March Hitchcock. But I, along with many other Bible students from around the world, heartily believe that the Book of Revelation spotlights America and its decisive role and influence in end time events. In fact, the Book of Revelation spotlights two key players in end time events that demand special attention for Bible prophecy students. I'm talking about the Roman papal power and the United States of America. These two superpowers will eventually work together to enforce the mark of the beast according to the Bible. Now on the surface that seems like it's way over the top, but I'd like you to take a closer look with me by considering two symbolic beasts revealed in Revelation chapter 13 as primary movers and shakers in end time events. In Bible prophecy, a beast represents a kingdom or political power. But in the case of the first beast, Revelation 13, it represents a system that is a deceptive and dangerous alliance of political and religious power. It is a lethal combination that proved to be deadly during the long dark ages. 
Now, as you study the verses in Revelation chapter 13, you will discover that the Protestant reformers were right on, like Martin Luther, John Wesley, John Calvin, William Tyndale, John Wycliffe, and a host of other Protestant reformers were correct when they bravely declared that the Roman papal power was exposed in the dynamic, colorful book of Revelation. So let's take a moment to look more closely at this first beast. The first beast is a Roman power. The papal power has its capital, guess where? In Rome. The first beast is a global system of worship, and so is the papal Roman power. The first beast blasphemes, and so does the papal power in its claim to forgive sin. The first beast persecutes the saints, the believers. The papal power has been guilty of killing 50 million people during the long, bloody, dark ages. The first beast, furthermore, receives a seemingly deadly wound and the papacy seemed to be doomed when the Pope was taken captive in 1798. The first beast had a deadly wound that was healed and all the world would follow it. These facts all point irrefutably, undeniably, to the Roman papal power. Now, what about the second beast? So who is the second beast in Revelation chapter 13? It is the United States of America. It is said that when America sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold. As goes the United States, so goes the rest of the world. So in what ways will the United States, the most powerful nation on earth, influence the entire world in the last days? Let's take a look at verse 11, Revelation 13 and verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. So, number one, it arises in a sparsely populated area. Because first of all, where does this beast arise? It arises from the earth. What does the earth symbolize? Well, the symbol of water represents a populated area according to Revelation 17 verse 15, which says, Revelation 17 verse 15 says, the waters which you saw are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Therefore, this new beast comes up out of the earth or an unpopulated area. Characteristic number two about this second beast, Revelation 13. It arises around 1798. When does this power arise? Let me validate that year, 1798. At a time when the Roman papal power is losing power, the second beast is gaining power. And so the Roman papal power would be going into captivity according to Revelation 13 verse 10. We read, he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Revelation 13 verse 10. So when did the Pope go into captivity? In 1798, by order of Napoleon. So the church lost its power to the French government in 1798. Now here's the critical question. Was America rising to prominence in power at the time when the papacy was losing power? Well, think about it. In 1775, battle for independence. 1776, Declaration of Independence. 1787, the Constitution is adopted. 1789, George Washington becomes the first president. 1790, the Supreme Court forms. 1791, the Bill of Rights is added. Yes, without a doubt. This nation of ours, the birth of our nation was miraculous in its fulfillment of prophecy. Characteristic number three, two horns, that would represent the separation of church and state. 
So the third characteristic of this second beast, Revelation 13 verse 11 says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Horns are a symbol of power. Two horns represent the separation of these two powers. So here we have portrayed a healthy separation of church and state. And thus this second beast derives its power from political and religious freedom. This nation is founded upon religious freedom made possible by the distinct separation of church and state. Like a lamb, that is freedom loving. This beast is described like a lamb. The two horns are like a lamb. The term lamb is used 29 times in the book of Revelation. And every one of those times except this one, it represents Jesus Christ. But here it represents the characteristics of Jesus in the way uh, it uses its power. It would seek to be harmless and freedom-loving. It espouses Christ-like principles of government. Characteristic number five, no crowns. That is, it's a democracy. Notice that there are no crowns on the horns of this second beast. Now the first horn of the first beast has crowns. Crowns indicate kingly authority. The lack of crowns indicates freedom. It is a nation that is based on the political foundation of we the people. Now remember, it has two horns representing the separation of civil and religious powers. No crowns means it is a democracy. So what is the only nation that fits this description? The United States of America. Now we've already seen this part of the prophecy fulfilled, but the prophecy continues. Number six, characteristic number six, it would support and promote worship of the first beast, the papacy. Strangely, this beast that starts out with such positive characteristics mutates into something radically different during the last days. At that time, it causes the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed, according to Revelation 13, verses 12 to 15. Characteristic number seven, it would have worldwide influence. It has worldwide influence in the end of time, according to Revelation 13, verses 12 and 14. Characteristic number eight, it enforces the mark of the beast. This dominant force in end events will speak like a dragon in the last days. It oppresses and persecutes those who refuse the mark of the beast, according to Revelation 13, verses 11 to 17. Characteristic number nine, deceiving signs. It will produce impressive and astonishing signs and wonders that will deceive the masses into believing that the mark of the beast is actually from God. So what we find here now is how will the United States of America begin to speak and sound like a dragon? A nation speaks through its laws and decrees. The official speaking of a nation is the action of its legislative and judicial authorities. Okay then, what dragon-like law will be enforced? The law that compels people to receive the mark of the beast. Listen to these chilling words in Revelation 13, verses 15 to 17. This is a very ominous end time prophecy that should move us to vigorously defend the freedom that this nation was founded upon. Let me read these verses. Verse Revelation 13, verses uh, 15 says, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
So, America is founded upon religious and political freedom. And in the heart of the Declaration of Independence, we read, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This was penned by Thomas Jefferson. 11 years after the Declaration of Independence was signed, the Constitution was ratified. Now, the United States Constitution guarantees liberty and freedom. The first 10 amendments to the Constitution are known as the Bill of Rights. Congress, number one, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Here's the question, friend. Will these historic freedoms ever be challenged? Will America abandon religious freedom? Will America tear up this First Amendment by forcing everyone to worship the first beast? Well, friends, the prophecy is clear that the answer is yes. Already the torch of religious freedom is beginning to flicker. Pope Francis, it is interesting that when Pope Francis visited the United States, he spoke much about religious and political freedom when he spoke to the U.S. Congress and when he spoke in front of Independence Hall. But historically, down through the Dark Ages, the Roman Church was vehemently opposed to freedom in that it persecuted heretics, and 50 million people lost their lives because they would not believe everything the Church was teaching and practicing contrary to Scripture. Listen to this fascinating quote from a former U.S. ambassador, quote, I believe that the United States as the world's only superpower and the Holy See as the only worldwide moral political sovereignty have significant roles to play in the future. Their actions will impact the lives of people in all parts of the globe. Thomas B. Melody, U.S. Ambassador to the Vatican. Yes, the United States and the Vatican have and will continue to work together and impact people's lives around the world. So yes, soon the United States of America will become the first nation to enforce the mark of the beast and the rest of the world will follow her example. But how will this all come about? How can we know that this dreadful prophecy is about to be fulfilled? What signs are we to look for that reveal that America is racing toward the mark of the beast? Now, if you want to learn more about the future of America and all about the mark of the beast and more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also visit us on our website and subscribe to our newsletter, Breaking Prophetic News, that explores explosive current events as they interface with end time Bible prophecies. You can also share this video on social media. Let us pray for our country. Let us pray for our family and let us pray for ourselves that we will be ready when Jesus comes again. May God bless you in your quest to learn more truth that makes us forever free.